When we bought our boat, we knew we wanted to make some major modifications to it to make it not only more comfortable to live on, but easier to navigate as well because we knew we wanted to travel far. So when we removed her from the water, we made some big plans to change the tiller for a helm. And that meant installing a radial drive and also modifying the rudder. And we're gonna walk you through that whole process. The original rudder extended the entire length of the transom and connected directly with the tiller on the top side. Though it served its purpose, it was quite unesthetically pleasing as well. And also, the boarding platform was left with a large hole in it to give room for the excess upper part of the rudder. And if you know anything about us by now, you know that it was the perfect opportunity for us to get carried away redesigning it all. This is Luke, and I'm Lori, and we're doing a complete restoration of our steel sailboat that we bought in Brazil. So join us as we work our way into the water and around the world. The plan? was fairly simple. First, we removed the original rudder and boarding platform. Then, we would need to extend the stern to house the components for the helm, about 12 inches or 30 centimeters on top, and 20 inches or 50 centimeters on the bottom. The rudder would need to be modified as well. The excess on top removed and the stock replaced with one that will pass through the stern. And finally, we wanted to raise the cockpit deck up to create more space below the deck for not only storage, but also to create enough space to house the components for the helm. Those modifications would allow us to install our helm, the radial drive, which attaches the helm to the rudder stock, and of course, the rudder stock itself. We started by removing the aft seating that also housed a diesel tank and got to modifying the stern. You can see this complete refit of the stern and the cockpit in episode four. The rudder stock was aligned and this housing was installed passing through the new stern before being welded shut. Then it was time to modify the rudder. The top part was cut down and the rudder stock removed to be replaced with a two inch stainless steel stock that would pass through the stern. When it was all assembled, we were super excited to finally see it on the Lahakai. was formed at the base of the new rudder stock and we created a custom gudgeon from stainless steel that needed to be fitted and welded onto the skeg to secure the rudder in place. We started by just spot welding the gudgeon so we could test how the rudder was fitting and rotating on its axis. It's a good thing we didn't finish the welding just yet because it became immediately apparent that there was some major alignment issues. The axis seemed to be off, swinging more to one side than the other. After further evaluation, we realized that the original skeg was crooked. So we cut the base of the skeg in order to make some micro adjustments in order to straighten it. This meant as well that the rudder was not aligned correctly on the stock. 
so we removed it and aimed to align just the stock first, then attach the rudder afterwards. But just as we thought we had solved all our problems, the weld on the rudder of the stock warped the stock and it was no longer straight. Hey guys, I am here at the Lahakai building site and we are currently on our third attempt try <laughs> I cut my finger. On our third attempt trying to install the rudder. So the first time we installed the rudder we had some issues because when it comes to steel it tends to warp when it's heated too much so we just did you know one big weld and it distorted the the axis so we tried to fix it a second time and now we're here on the third time we actually align the axis without the rudder attached to it to see if we can get it to be perfect so now we're, we're putting it in place and then after we're going to weld the rudder on very little by little to see if we can get it to be attached without distorting it. So third time is a charm. Let's see what happens. So this time we went in with a better plan. With the skeg aligned and the rudder stock straightened, we spot welded the rudder into place and aligned it. And we continuously checked the alignment every step of the process. slowly welded the rudder in small alternating sections, letting the welds cool before continuing to ensure this time the metal would not warp. So when we put the rudder on for the final time, it was rotating correctly and we were ready to move on to the next step. <laughs> Now this is the main event. We found this perfectly sized helm in a secondhand nautical shop and it came with a pedestal, radial drive, and even an old broken compass. Of course, we had some ideas on how we wanted to customize it, but that will have to be tackled another day. First, let's get the pedestal on the boat. To do this, we measured the location and drilled the necessary holes to secure it to the deck and we did a test installation to make sure everything was aligned properly. Hey guys, this is the pedestal of the helm and we actually installed this uh, tube to pass cables from it because it didn't have anything before. It had a small hole in which you could pass one, one um, cable which would go to the bussola, which is the compass. Sorry, I got these words confused with Portuguese English. And it, we didn't want anything to get uh, caught up in the system here. Plus, we're going to have significantly more things. We have a, a chart plotter, a bussola, um, a compass, and we have our, the control of the motor and everything. So it's a lot of stuff. So we wanted to have a, a larger container. So it's going to pass from behind here in through this hole and down here. We're actually going to fill this with um, some fairing compound just to, to hide it. We're going to seal it with a um, flex and cover it up. And then we're going to paint it all white, so I think it's going to blend in and you won't even notice it. So it's looking really good and we're super excited. We've already drilled the hole. Um, these are all the screw holes. This is where the cable passes for um, the helm. And this is where all the cables are going to pass for the electronics. So very exciting. I think it's going to go in today. 
We thought it was going to go in every single day, maybe for the last five months. So <laughs> don't hold your breath. Or as they say in Brazil, I'm going to remain seated. Once we were ready to install the pedestal, we cleaned up the base and the deck floor as best as possible. We then applied a generous amount of Cicaflex 291, which is a marine grade polyurethane adhesive and sealant. Then we tightened the bolts the maximum possible and allowed the Cicaflex to bleed out the sides so we could later cut it off uniformly once dry. With the pedestal in place, we could start threading the steering cables through the pedestal and down below the deck. To attach it to the helm, we connected the cables to the chain that moved the wheel shaft. But before this, we thoroughly cleaned all the steering components and applied grease. I must have been searching, though I wasn't looking for much. Checking out the scene, wasn't trying to get my numbers up. While the rudder was being installed, the planning under the deck was happening simultaneously. The location of the base of the pedestal below the deck and the idlers were being calculated as well as the length of the steering cables needed. The radial drive was then fitted and tested prior to the official installation. While the pedestal was being installed on the top deck, below deck the idlers were being fastened on. Then came the official installation of the radial drive on the rudder stock. Can you imagine that most sailboats, they don't have as much space as we have created in our boat to access the rudder? It took two people to finish the installation, but it was a success. The steering cables were then threaded onto the radial drive and secured. Just like that, our boat had a helm. This was a huge moment for us and a long time in the making. With all of the construction on the boat happening at the same time, it was a wonder how amazing everything turned out. It certainly took a team of people to make this happen. And if you've noticed, we don't have any footage of the davits being built, but you can see them here, completed, in all of their Hercules-like glory. Mm -hmm.